Today our first guest is director David Fincher, directed such films as Seven, Fight Club, Panic Room. Thanks for showing up on my show, man. Thanks for having me. We're all me. pretty blown away by, by your presence. Yikes. Just, I love the way your films look. There's such an amazing blue-green to Fight Club, all that fluorescent lighting. It just shoots you through this tube. It's just so like... <laughs> And then by the end of the movie, you're just kind of like worn out. I love it. And I just want to talk about, you know, how you, where even the lighting achieves this momentum. Well, I mean, we were trying to keep it pretty realistic, but we're trying to kind of make things dark and make things a little bit more, you know, make it seem, in that movie especially, make it seem like it's sort of a counterculture or an underground kind of movement, and we didn't want it to feel too lit. If I like a film, I watch scenes over and over again, and I'm just very aware of just how a set is dressed, and I... I see so much attention to detail in your in your work and I I just wanted to know how you achieve that. I think my biggest responsibility is to present people who are playing dress up with a world that will make them feel like that's you know I want an actor to walk on a set and have the dirt in the corners be the right kind of dirt. And when they open a drawer, I want them to see you know, their address book and their, and their magnifying glass and their, you know, book of matches. For me, it's not initially about the performance. You know, I'm not, I'm not the kind of director who can, you know, help an actor in that way. My job is to push it all there, get it there, and then record something. And, and you know, then it's in the hands of the people who, people go to movies to see, you know, it's the, it's the faces. As a film fan, I'm very aware of the spread of tension throughout a film and in my opinion your films just have this beautiful flow to them you got a thing going on in these movies that's really intense you know obviously in the suspense movie the big game that you're playing is there are times when you want the audience anticipating and so the rule of thumb is take as much time with that as you can and then there are the times when you want to surprise them and the rule of thumb after that is you want it you want to go as quickly as you can part of the Pavlovian response of an audience to a movie is that you're, you're trying to throw them off, trying to get them to lean forward in their seats, and then you want to scare them and push them back, and then release that tension and let them laugh, and then get them into a chase. It seems to me these days you get really good-looking movies that just don't have that visceral punch. I remember being a teenager, walking out of Apocalypse Now, pretty devastated. Smoke coming out of our ears, just like, just what did we just see? What yeah. have we just been put through? Yeah. And it really was a beating you took. But I love movies like that. Absolutely. I think movies should inflict themselves on the audience. Absolutely. You know, I, I'm so tired of this whole idea of it just being entertainment or dessert. You know, movies are a commodity now, much more so than they were back then. The time those movies are made, you know, Kinney Shoes owned Warner Brothers. I mean, the people who were running the studios were like, well, we don't know, but maybe this guy knows, maybe this guy knows. And so they were trying a lot of things. And now movie studios, I think, have a pretty good idea of what works. They don't want the audience to be uncomfortable. They want to be able to market something that the audience will understand and the audience will get their eight bucks worth. Audiences, in general, don't like to be made uncomfortable. It makes them uncomfortable to be uncomfortable. I wanted to ask you, I think a lot of people are always interested what a director watches. What do you like to see when you throw down your 950 and go to a movie? I, I'm a total whore for computer animation. I just, I love what Pixar does. Visual storytelling that's not encumbered by, you know, compromise. Filmmaking at its highest, I think, right now. But the movies that I watch over and over and over again are Chinatown and Godfather. And I can go through the Godfather cycle about once a year with no problem yeah. and still enjoy them got to do it yeah you got to do it Absolutely. Gotta pray to the altar and the film that david and i are going to review today is called the assassination of richard nixon it says here that you're currently employed as an office furniture salesman mm -hmm. yes that's correct you want to know who the greatest salesman in the world is that man right there he sold the whole country on himself Twice. The Assassination of Richard Nixon is the debut film from Niels Mueller and stars Sean Penn in the true story of the man who plotted an abortive attempt on the life of our 37th president. Penn plays Sam Bick, a 44-year-old man desperately looking for something to believe in. Separated from his wife Marie, played by Naomi Watts. I just want you to know that I'm not seeing it. Are you spying on me? Bick struggles to hold on to yet another job for which he is fundamentally unfit. Sam, but Sam, it's a job. I 
<laughs> See, this is what I mean. A man doesn't give up his rights at a job. A man doesn't give up his rights anywhere, and you of all people should know that. Holding on to the hope of what he still believes is the achievable American dream, Bick begins to break down when a series of ill-fated events test the very limits of his sanity. Everything okay at work? Everything okay at home. For Bick, Richard Nixon becomes the embodiment of everything that is wrong in the world. Bick decides the only way to reclaim his insignificant life is to carry out a grand historic gesture that will make his presence felt. Somebody has to resist. While this film marks the first reunion of Sean Penn and Naomi Watts since their celebrated performance together in 21 Grams, be warned, this is by no means a love story. This is a dark character study, and Sean Penn is up to the task. Just wait and see. David, did you like the movie? I did. Yeah, I really did. I, I like these kinds of movies. I like it. You don't see them very often. It's very hard to make dramas in Hollywood, and, and this is fundamentally a drama. And, you know, it's a drama about a, a real downward spiral. I think it's good to make these kinds of movies, and I think it's, it's nice to see that it got made. I mean, it took a lot of people, a lot of executive producers with a lot of clout to get it done, but, you know, it's a wonderful cast, and it's a really well-made movie, and, you know, people should see it. Why do you think it took uh, uh, someone as heavy-duty as Leonardo DiCaprio? I mean, it, it seems like a bit of overkill when you see the people who believed in this movie surrounded it and had to apparently go pretty hard against the wall to get this thing made. This is, this is tough stuff. There's a lot of humanity, but not a lot of humor in this movie. It's pretty much about a, a single descent. And the movie is beautifully evocative of the 70s. You know, I don't think since Virgin Suicides, I've seen a movie that really kind of caught the 70s in a legitimate way. Sean Penn, star of the film, I think he's better than ever. There's so much he's giving just with his face, just yeah. with his eyes. In this film, you watch this man almost like layer, like an onion just being peeled off. He's humiliated. Yeah. You know, when you see these horrible scenes of him just sitting on the hood of his car waiting for yeah. his estranged wife to come home. Watching the kiss, which I thought was really a wonderfully understated scene where he yeah. watches her get kissed by the other man. There are not a lot of actors who choose to degrade themselves that way. And yeah, he's, he's wonderful. I'm sure you saw Sean Penn films before you actually met the guy because yeah. he goes so far back. Yeah. How have you seen the guy grow and refine himself over the years? You know, there are different kinds of actors. You know, there are some actors that at a reasonable distance you see what it is that they're doing. And there are some actors that if you're just behind the camera and you're watching them and you don't see it and you're kind of like, and it freaks you out and you kind of look at it and go, well, is enough happening? Is there, are there enough changes? Is there enough colorings or shadings? And then you see it in dailies and it's that big and you go, wow, he's doing so much. You know, Morgan Freeman is one of those guys that you just, you, you worry the first two days of shooting, you're just like, you know, maybe is he, is he doing anything? And then when you see it, you just go, oh my God, he's doing everything. And I, you know, I lump you know, Sean into that kind of category. He's, he's deceptive. It's sneaky. And I just, I'm a fan. I just keep watching him as the years go on. And he's able to put more of himself into it. Like, like the acting in Mystic River to me was just like, just pulverizing. Yeah. Where like, you know, 15 years before, could he have done that? I don't know. But he seems to just always be reaching for the next thing where I think a lot of actors I have found, they hit a certain thing, they're comfortable being that guy, and they stop. And I'm not going to name any names. But you, you, you go, oh, you're doing that thing again? Why? Yeah. Where a guy like Sean Penn is always like, uh-uh, just pulling himself towards the next thing. I admire that, and it makes me want to go see him in the next film and the next film. He's a guy who's coming into his own. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, th I wanted to point out, everybody in this movie is really great. You know, the yeah. Nick Searcy and, and um, Don Cheadle. It's good all around. There's, there's great faces in this movie, and, and every little person in it is nicely done. It's a great first movie. Yeah. I mean, oh, it's a great first all. movie. It, it, it helps having such a kick-ass cast. I mean, these are such strong actors. That's more than half the job. Yeah. I mean, to me, Naomi Watts can you really do no wrong. you got to get a script, though. you got to get a great script in order to get a cast like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. I mean, these are not people, n none of the people in this movie are people who are going to whore themselves out. Or they're certainly not going to all whore themselves out at the same time. You know, to put a cast together like this is, is a kind of alchemy, and you, and you have to have a magnet at the center of it. I mean, more power to, you know, movies like Assassination of Richard Nixon, because we do, we do need this stuff. We sure. need... We need people to be making these kinds of movies. Yeah, absolutely. So, 
you would recommend this movie to yeah, people? Yeah, absolutely. You know, see the movie. It's, it's a dark movie. Yeah. yeah, but a great one. Yeah, I think it's good. I think it's really good. Well, thanks for being a guest on the show, David. Thank uh, you very much, man. I think man. it's great what you're doing, man. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I really, I look forward to more of it. Cool. Next up on Typecast, real firemen talk about the film Ladder 49.